Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're tuning in today. We have Go Juice and we're ready for it. Man, Facebook is always changing things. Like, uh, just always changing things. There's this star system now for, for videos I see. Nah. Here, I, I load this video to YouTube so I can drop it in emails. And their way of allowing me to access the video afterwards is changing. Like, it's it's just, it's silly. Um Good morning, Nita and Bev and Todd. Glad you guys are all tuning in today. Um, we have the the memorial service for Anne tomorrow at 11 a.m. with reception to follow. Um, and I'm excited for the hope. I'm excited for the comfort and the promises and the reminder of all therein um, for not only the family, but for us as well. Uh, let's make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the Version Bible app, our verse of the day takes us to Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Well, we, we, we know this text well, we've heard it a number of times, and it was shocking for the disciples, but, uh, and it's shocking for us as well. But one thing that um, we should be aware of is when we read the Gospels, we often have the whole narrative in mind. We know all the pieces. At this point, if you are a disciple, Jesus has not predicted his death. And when he does predict his death, he doesn't always say it will be by means of the cross. So when he says, take up your cross, they have no frame of reference for this is the future way that he will save people from their sins. He does, they don't know this. So he says, if you're going to be one of my followers, you need to be carrying an electric chair with you a guillotine with you. Take it with you. And you need to be willing to die to be my follower. Why why would anyone want to do this? This is totally flipping the idea of being a follower of a rabbi on its head. But Jesus says this to all, not only his disciples, and he's shaking things up because they think they're going to be popular. And not only is he saying, you're not going to be popular, but if you remember, this is a an honor-shame culture. So the cross is about the most shameful way you could die. Naked and nailed to a cross. Shame in this sense is... It can be a corporate experience, just as one member of your family can bring honor to all. They can also bring shame to the entire family as well. So shame people or shame families are ostracized and excluded from the community. So among Luke's elite readers, he's making a break with their biological families, and now associating by means of a surrogate family with Jesus. And he's flipping this honor-shame concept upside down. A lot of people would follow a rabbi so that they could acquire the honor of the rabbi. And Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, it will be a shameful following. 
And then when he closes with, if, if you lose your life for me, you will save it. Uh, I, I doubt anyone was tracking with him at that point because they're like, why would I take up this shameful life and if I'm trying to save my own hide, I'm going to lose it? They're, they're, they're confused. So, how do we apply this to us today? Well, the exact same. We accept the burdens of being an imitator of Christ. The culture doesn't like Christians. It likes the way that Christians behave in culture on the whole shot. They like morality. They're not opposed to us acting morally. But to be a Christian and to profess your faith and be a follower of Jesus means suffering. In some parts of the world, it means death. But at the very end, it also means resurrection. And this is the theme for the memorial service tomorrow. A life of suffering, a life of death for Anne. But Jesus promises a resurrection for her as well. Let us be bold in the gospel. Let us be bold to talk to that family member, to talk to that friend. Because it's their eternity that weighs in the balance. We might hurt someone's feelings. They might not like the conversation. So then we figure out how to do it in love and gently. But it's a result that we're looking for. And that God works out, not us. He said this to all, not just his disciples. This is quite striking. He says this to all. Take up a life of shame and suffering and death. But if you do it for Jesus' sake, you save your life and others. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, this life that your Son calls us to live as his followers challenges us at every turn to live a life of shame to live a life as your follower. Lord, help us to be bold. Help us to come to church with excitement to have, at least for a time, a brief break from the suffering. But then when we go back out, give us the boldness of Paul. Give us the boldness of Peter to stand before the critics and lift up your name in praise. We pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, have a wonderful weekend. Um, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to have the service live here for a number of people, um, family, and members of the church that may not be able to come, um, and then uh, worship on Sunday. So have a wonderful day in the Lord. We'll see you soon.